I don't know how to start a video, but I'm Hooless, and this is Stardew Valley, and it's been a while. It's been a while. Oh my god. I've never had it foggy before. It's way foggier than I had thought it would be. Okay. So, this is Stardew Valley 1.3, the beta, and I am playing with mods. And I haven't really done that before. Uh, I've been playing with friends since the beta came out, but even then, you know, I haven't... Haven't been playing too much with mods overall. We sort of just started and we haven't played it much. But I am playing with mods. I have 23 installed right now, all of which do work with the current beta. And they work in multiplayer as well, which is why I picked them out. And uh, I, I guess I'll list them off real quick. I don't really know what the goal of this series is. I was just about to start up a solo farm and I was like, Hey, if I'm going to play a solo farm, I might as well record it, I suppose. So here we are. Excuse the sniffling, please. My allergies are in hyper overdrive as we move into summer and the trees outside my house are like giving off fluff into the wind and it's getting all up in my nose. Uh, the mods that I have installed are activate sprinklers, automate better. Art I have, I don't know if these are the actual names on the mod nexus, by the way. It's just what the folders are called. So they might be called something slightly different, but for the most part, I think you can, you can find them by these names. If I can remember, I'll try to put a, a zip file in the description containing all of my mods and, you know, their configuration files and all that, so that uh, anyone who wants to can play along. So, activate sprinklers, automate. Maybe it would be good for me to explain what these do, I suppose, as I go along. Maybe. You can tell I didn't plan this out at all. Uh, so, activate sprinklers, it lets you place down sprinklers and then you can right click on them to activate them instead of having to wait for the next day for them to go off. This helps with, you know, if you place sprinklers down in the middle of a day and your crops aren't watered yet, you can easily get to that. Ignore the plane in the background, please. Uh, automate. It lets you place down chests next to machines, which I believe is like, you know, furnaces, uh, the mushroom things in the, in the cave, uh, you know, mayonnaise machines cheese presses, all that good stuff. Anything where you have to put something in and you get something out. Uh, if you put down a chest next to it, it will push unfinished goods into it if it can and pull finished goods out of it. So what this means is if we have a furnace set down and we put a chest next to it and the chest has, you know, iron ore and coal, it'll push iron ore and coal into the furnace and smelt it and it will pull out the iron bars as as they're created so this helps us set up like a little factory kind of thing which should be kind of cool i'm not sure exactly how useful that'll be like excuse me oh i'm using my pickaxe i don't know how useful that'll be because like we can't chain them together so we can't really create factories but maybe when some more mods update and more machines get added through said mods uh it might be able to create bigger factories and that'll be pretty cool so that's that uh just discard that real quick throw down a chest like I always do literally in that spot every single game. Oh, the fog cleared up. That's really cool, actually. Uh, like I said, I've never seen that before. And you can see another mod at play here. I will explain that when I get to it. I'll keep that on me for now. Throw the coal away. Uh, better artisan good icons. What that does is makes it so that when you have artisan goods, for example, uh, jellies... Uh, wine, that kind of thing, in your inventory, instead of all having the same icon and you have to mouse over it to see what it is, they have individual icons based on what food product you used to create it. And I think that looks really good. Uh, I haven't seen that in play yet, so that might not even be working, because I've never, like, we haven't gotten the save far enough to be able to see the artisan good icons in play. But it should be pretty cool. It, the pictures certainly look good on the, the whatever it's called, Nexus Mods place. That place. Which, by the way, is the place where you can get all of these mods and many, many more. There's plenty of mods on there that we just didn't get because we didn't, like, we weren't very interested in them. But they might be other people's cup of tea more than they are ours. Uh, can I recover my energy in the bed? I think that was patched. Let me just go in here and lay down. No, don't go to sleep for the night. 
No, I can't. Okay. So they changed that. Uh, Better Hay. That's the mod that I mentioned we could already see in play. And I'll go down here to demonstrate it a little bit more. Uh, when you slice grass, it gives you hay right away instead of having to wait until you get a silo to be able to get hay out of grass, which is a nice quality of life feature. I don't know if I'll be getting animals this this run through. It's possible, I suppose. Um, I don't have anything against animals. I just often forget that I need to deal with them. And, you know, being able to get hay from grass will be nice at least because, you know, I won't have to wait for Marnie to be open if I forget I can just go cut some grass and we'll probably if I do get animals we will be growing some grass on the farm uh, although I don't have the mod that lets grass grow in the winter which would have been nice uh, better quarry 1.3 version probably doesn't matter and might be changed by the time you you see this video I don't know but better quarry makes it so that the quarry has better chances to have high quality stuff in it and the quarry, if you don't know, is given when you complete the... Oh, uh, what is it? The fish plaque, perhaps? Because the blacksmith plaque is the... The, uh, the minecart system. And... The money-based one, where you just pay money for all of them, unlocks the bus. So I think it's gotta be... The fishing plaque. Probably. But it unlocks, uh, I think we can see it on the map here. This area, there's a bridge here, just south of the Adventurer's Guild and the mine. Uh, this is the quarry. And when you have better quarry installed, it gives it a higher chance to... Right, I can't do that. Um, gives you a higher chance to get good stuff out of it. Uh, that's a place that I felt like base Stardew was kind of lacking a little bit. Because you, it kind of the problem that Stardew has... And it's just a problem for me. Maybe other people don't see it as a problem. Probably most people don't see it as a problem. But it feels like the rewards you get for things aren't worth the effort that it takes to get them generally. Like, I don't do the community center, center bundles because I'm like, ooh, let me get that quarry unlocked because it's going to be so useful. Because the quarry isn't useful. Like, it just doesn't give you meaningful rewards often enough. And better quarry goes part of the way towards fixing that. Also... Damn, 140 hay? I've barely cut any grass down. Um, can I plant these seeds? I have enough energy, that's fine. Just uh, toss these down. If you couldn't tell, um, this is live. Like I'm doing it as I'm playing. Which is a change up from my normal format, but I felt like it would work better for kind of a more relaxed kind of thing where I'm not really going for any particular goal. Uh, What's next? Climates of Ferngill. F Ferngill? I don't know. Something like that. Ferngill. Uh, it is the mod that was doing the fog thing at the beginning of this day. And it does a few other weather patterns. We'll probably see it eventually. Uh, I, I think it looked pretty cool. I, I don't typically like doing mods, as you will see from the rest of this list, that just change things aesthetically. Like, I don't like portrait mods. Or mods that retexture houses or animals, or retexture items. I like mods that add new gameplay features or change how things work because that's more interesting to me than oh, this is really cool actually. This must be new to the um, to the beta. There was previously just like rocks here and nothing over on this side, but now you can actually see the guy. That's really cool. I haven't come up here while well, the mines were still closed before, at least during the beta. Um. Climates of Ferngill is one of the mods that doesn't change very much, but I like the weather that it adds. And I think combined with some other mods, it could be really cool. Like the, um, uh, what's it called? Weather Illnesses. I don't have it installed because my friends weren't into it. But Weather Illnesses makes it so that if you're outside doing things during adverse weather conditions, you have a chance to contract a cold, and that makes you take up more energy in kind of the Harvest Moon style. Don't, oh, okay. Oh my god, it's so foggy, though. Oh, that's crazy. Whoa. Alright, oh, it's because it went past 6pm, so it got kind of darker. Alright, um... Next up is Community Center Bundle Overhaul. I haven't been able to check and see if this is working, or to get it working, 
but we will see. Basically what it does is it makes all of the bundles much harder to complete. So much harder, in fact, that I don't think it's possible to get it done within a year in the game. Like, even in multiplayer, there's just too much, and there's too many things that require you be in the second year or beyond. So I don't think that'll be a goal, because, well, it won't be a goal to complete it within a year, because that's just not going to happen, and you'll see when I get it working, if I get it working, that it's just, it's unreasonable. Uh, console commands that comes with the starting modding API uh, just lets us use some commands in the console doesn't affect too much i won't really be using it except that i have to use console commands to activate the bundle overhauls i believe so maybe that but beyond that not going to use it for anything uh content patcher is used for changing images of items and i have this yeah i have i have that installed if that wasn't clear i have next up is content patcher and that's used for modifying images that could be overwritten by other mods to make sure that they don't conflict for example portraits and stuff I don't believe any of the mods that I have installed are currently using that, but I don't want to remove it because it's like, it's not taking up much space anyways. And, the, you know, there's no reason to remove it. It's not doing anything. So, I'd rather just keep things not broken. Just looking around for some forgeables real quick, as per usual. Because forgeables are great. Get out of here. Fiber. Uh, what's next? Next up is convenient chests, which I will demonstrate once I get back to the farm shortly. Essentially what it does is it makes it so that if you are near a chest, I think the range is within four tiles roughly. There's a forge board here. Uh, if you're within about four tiles of a chest, then you can craft things in your inventory as though you had the things in that chest in your inventory, which is very handy. Uh, you know, just... So you don't have to hold things in your inventory, and you can quickly, you know, craft things without having to go looking through chests to see what it's in. And, you know, it's just a nice quality of life thing. Some might consider it a little bit cheaty, and it probably is. It's not something that would be included in the game by default, I feel. And for good reason, because it doesn't make sense. But I do like having it. Uh, next up is Desert Obelisk. This goes in with the... The other late game things that are in the game, uh, you may or may not know about the obelisks in the game. There's the earth obelisk and the water obelisk. The earth obelisk teleports you to the mountain when you use it, when you right click on it. It's a building you can build on your farm. The wizard has it after you complete his quest later on. No further spoilers because, you know, people can do that on their own. I might get to it in this series eventually. Uh... I might have to like pause this to talk about the rest of the mods because I do want to get all these over with in the first video. Uh, just toss these in here. Uh, let me see. Desert Obelisk, like I was saying, uh, the Earth Obelisk teleports you to the mountain, the Water Obelisk teleports you to the beach, the Desert Obelisk, obviously from the name, teleports you to the desert, which is nice. Uh, it's a nice convenience thing so you don't have to pay money to get there. Uh, extreme Fishing Overhaul which you will see shortly. I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing in this series, and I can show you kind of the influence. Uh, I click on this, and you might immediately notice that something is different. Something is askew if you have seen this screen often, because normally there's less than however many fish is on here. Five, ten, times eight, seven. So normally, this page wouldn't even be filled up because there's less than 70 fish, but... Uh, the extreme fishing overhaul adds in randomized fish. And it adds in a lot of randomized fish. About a thousand, in fact. They all have randomized names, randomized uh, icons based on existing fish in the game, but recolored and swapped around and stuff. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I like the variety that it adds in, even though it does make it a little bit crazy. Um, it doesn't replace the base fish, so you can still catch all of the normal fish in the game, which allows you to fulfill bundles and whatnot. It just adds in a bunch of extra fish on top of that. Uh, fast animations, you will see probably in the next video if I eat some food. It speeds up animations for certain things that you're going to be doing a lot, especially breaking geodes, eating food, milking animals, and cheering sheep. And it just makes all of those quicker, so that you don't have to spend as long looking at them. I have fishing overhaul which adds in some more changes to the fishing 
system. And I don't know if that works with extreme fishing overhaul. This was meant to be a test world, like a test farm, where I see if those actually work together before we add it back into our multiplayer. So uh, that does a few things. It makes it easier. Well, first of all, it makes it possible to get iridium star fish, like iridium star quality fish. And second, it makes it so that rewards for treasure chests are a bit better, especially if you've gotten more perfect catches in a row. Uh, it makes it just so that you can more easily get higher quality treasure and higher quality fish, and it's just all around very nice to have. Uh, next is level extender, which makes it so that the max level for all of the skills is 100. It's not visible here. They still go up to 10, and you still get professions at level 5 and level 10. It just continues increasing to 100, at which point, you know, you get increasingly good benefits as you go along and all that good stuff, and it's just nice to have. Uh, it works together with the extreme fishing overhaul mod so that you can, you know, catch a wider variety of fish the higher level you are. There's a bunch of, like... You know, there's a bunch of fish that have higher fishing level requirements, so that's pretty neat. Uh, look up anything. I think I can show you that real quick. Yeah, you hover over anything, you press F1, and it shows you what what it is. So I can press it in my inventory, press it on items, and it tells me who likes it, what's what it's in. And I can use it on people as well, and that tells me... Uh, what they like. If you've used mods, you're probably familiar with Look Up Anything. It's very handy. Press F1 to use it if you happen to use it. If you happen to download these mods. Which will require, by the way, that you download the latest beta of Stardew. Uh, there's info out there on how to opt into the beta. And you can use the latest beta version of the Stardew modding API. And then you can just dump all of the mods in and it should work like instantly. Uh, next is more multiplayer info, just adds in a few more uh, chat prompts for when things are happening. Notably, it makes it so that if you are the last person to sleep, it tells you that you're the last person to sleep, and it mentions whenever people go to bed, mostly stuff that should have been in the game anyways, and probably will be eventually. Uh, no fence decay, makes it so that fences don't decay. They're very simple, very straightforward, and a very good addition because it's really annoying when fences decay and then you have to break them and replace them. It's just a pain. Uh, range display, I will show that one eventually. It lets you see the ranges for sprinklers and, more notably, uh, scarecrows. So you can easily see whether or not your crops are being included. Make sure that no crows get anything. Uh, save backup backs up your save. I don't know how frequently. That also comes with the Stardew modding API by default. Simple crop label. Uh, I can show that one real quick. You go out. Uh, you have crops right here. And you hold right click and you mouse over them and it says parsnip and you can right click while you're hovering over them and it just tells you what they are it works on trees as well maple tree oak tree all that good stuff so that's also just a nice quality of life thing uh stack everything i don't want to like make make stuff that would show what it does but it makes it so that chests scarecrows that kind of thing can stack with each other whereas normally they can't and then finally, there's just a core mod that works for the fishing overhaul thing and is not important. So that's the entire list of mods. Uh, hopefully you guys are looking forward to watching this modded Stardew beta series where I'll be going over, like looking at some of the cool stuff that you can find in mods. Uh, I'll be installing more mods as we go along, most likely. And I'll be checking out the stuff that is in the beta. Eventually, I might build cabins on my farm and get a few people in here with me. I don't know what the cabins require to build. I started this as a single player world, so it doesn't have any cabins pre-built. But I know you can add them by talking to Robin. So we'll see that eventually. And other than that, hopefully you guys are looking forward to watching this. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys all next time.